Good morning and welcome to Florida. Just so you guys know, Florida is open and they are working. Business is booming. It's like I left Alabama Friday morning and I arrived here in Florida last night about seven. And then I got up this morning and realized that I have nothing for my Tuesday vlog. So this is gonna be my Tuesday vlog. It's uh, Saturday morning and I'm taking my walk and uh, it's crazy how many people are working today doing construction and uh, up ahead of me, it looks like they're putting up decorations at this house. I don't know. Well, I was wrong about the decorations. They are finishing up construction on a new home. It's a, it's a really busy neighborhood. It's a beautiful 60 degrees here and I have long sleeves on because the wind's blowing and it makes it a little bit cooler, but it's, it's really nice here. I uh, think I'm gonna enjoy this weather for the next couple of days. Good morning, it's Monday and happy winter solstice. It's the shortest day of the year, longest night of the year. Um, I'm on my way to Jacksonville. I'm going to visit my aunt today and help her out with a few things. I've been doing a lot of driving since Sunday. I got up um, Sunday morning and drove to Orlando and uh, dropped off my daughter th daughter's things and visited with her for a little bit. And then I drove to um, West Palm Beach little north of there actually to visit with my my really great awesome friend Rachel and we spent about an hour and a half almost two hours over coffee and pie visiting I'm gonna leave the picture here Rachel has been an absolute wonderful friend to me I could not repay her in any way. She, um, like I said, she's just been a really awesome friend. When my husband was sick and in ICU, at that time they wouldn't let anybody in, nobody. So the only thing that I could do was to sit in the parking lot. So I sat in the grass as close to ICU as I could get. My husband was on the second floor. I could only guess where he was at, but I went there several days just sitting in the grass and um, praying that my husband would get better. Well, towards the end, she came up and sat with me and brought me all kinds of awful stuff, chocolate, it, cookies, I think there was some um, little cupcakes. And we sat there on the grass and giggled and laughed and cried. And uh, I was able to get on FaceTime with my husband, Fred, while she was with me. And we both sat there and talked to him. And uh, he was, you know, he was obviously unconscious. But, um, he did move his head when I told him that I was there, that I was just sitting right outside. He moved his, he moved his head towards the window and uh, he did move his mouth. I um, thought he said, I love you. And uh, Rachel saw it, so it counts. But uh, when he moved his head and, and moved his, his lips, he had a trach, so he couldn't talk, but he did move his mouth. And um, 
it gave us so much hope that maybe he was getting better. And uh, so we giggled and laughed and, and talked to him and um, encouraged him to get better. But um, by the next day, I think he had, uh, I think he had lost his fight. So, but that's not the point. The point was, she was there with me in my worst hour. And she had me laughing and hoping that Fred would pull through this time. I cannot thank Rachel enough for being there with me and helping me through this. She has helped me through every step of the way and I know that if I need a shoulder to cry on that she is there for me. And Rachel, thank you so much. I love you. Thank you. Thank you for being there for me. So after having coffee and pie with Rachel, then I went and had dinner with my children. And uh, there were seven of us, and we had ended up having to wait an hour for a table. But that was fine. We, we were seated. We had a really good meal. Um, it was our Christmas family dinner, and um, they were already making plans for next year. The next year that we needed to have another family meal for Christmas, and we just had to figure out a way to do it. So I, I'm sure that my kids will pull it off. They, they're pretty good at that. I just want to do a little side note because I didn't realize that I was going to go through Palatka today. Um, Palatka, Green Cove Springs area. This is the area where my grandmother was born and uh, she's actually buried here in Palatka. My grandmother, whom we all refer to as Mimi, was a strong individual and uh, I loved her to death when she passed. I blubbered like a baby for days. She was, I loved my Mimi. So, but uh, I spent my summers, at least one, if not two weeks a summer with Mimi. Um, I remember when we were little, when my parents first split up, it was just me and my brother, but we went to go live with, we went to go stay with my Mimi. And uh, my first memories of her were her, um, she would, she wore dentures and she would push her dentures out and she would clack them and she would chase me and my brother around the house. And I just remember that we would laugh hysterically. Some of my fondest memories um, were at Mimi's house. And uh, actually this should have been a Thanksgiving story because we always went to my Mimi's house for Thanksgiving. She always had a beautiful spread. Um, she was just a good cook. She made the best fried chicken. I think one of the things that I regret the most is I never learned how to make her fried chicken. She always used a cast iron pan and it was always cooked through and delicious and it would always smell so wonderful. And she made the best cream peas. I love cream peas. Can't stand them any other way, just cream peas, the way my grandmother used to make them. So that's a, just a few stories about Mimi. She was, um, she was the best and a big part of my life growing up.